But let's just get into this actually now, because his quote brings up a, two two important points. One is that this was a very common view among abolitionists at the time. This was they were common, and they were commonly using it as um, an argument for why the Constitution was anti-slavery, which was another thing that you saw gain prominence towards um, really the Civil War era. You know, the abolitionists kept continued to argue that the, uh, the 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 Constitution was actually not a pro-slavery document, and uh, depending on the way you read it precluded slavery. And one of the ways, apparently, I actually didn't know this. Uh, I knew about that debate within abolitionists and, uh, and then, you know, because some abolitionists obviously viewed it uh, the other way, that, that this constitution was, um, you know, inherently broken because of slavery. Uh, this was a debate at the time. Um, and clearly all the people we're citing here came down on the, the idea that the constitution, um, if, properly read and enforced would prohibit slavery because a lot of these rights should be guaranteed to all people, um, including slaves. Um, but, um, <clears throat> but so the, you know, the other, uh, area where this, uh, where his, this quote speaks to a, a division among some of these 19th century writers, is with regard to uh, the Second Amendment uh, and how it acts on the states. Right? That this was an area where there was some disagreement in the 19th century. Uh, sorry, in the, during the 19th century, where you had a lot of uh, these writers, uh, especially the abolitionists, arguing that the Second Amendment actually does prohibit states from uh, infringing on the people's right to keep and bear arms. And, including all people, including slaves. And so they're arguing that actually like a lot of black codes and, and slave laws at the time that prohibited, you know, African-Americans from having guns or slaves having guns, that those were actually unconstitutional because of the second amendment. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 uh, that's, they, they applied it to the entire bill of rights, but the second amendment certainly yes. fit into that. And if there wasn't an individual right, then they wouldn't be able to make that argument. Of course, they see that as everyone did at the time to apply to an individual right. And I shouldn't say everyone, but clearly a lot of not people, everyone. not everyone, but um, they, they saw it as applying to an individual right. And if white men at the time had the right to bear arms, then so would, of course, it would follow uh, freedmen. Yeah. Yes. The, and, and obviously that is an area where other 19th century authors disagreed Um even if they were sort there's, I know there's a quote in here um, that comes from a, a section, uh, I believe it was Flack. Is that right? Yes. Um, the dissertation. Yeah. Yeah. The dissertation on the 14th amendment, the passage of the 14th amendment. He, he says that while slavery existed, it was, uh, um, it, it was, it would logically follow that the slaveholding states could restrict the rights of slaves to have guns. And so that was the logic behind why the second amendment wouldn't apply to the states, right? That's essentially the view that he outlines there. He, not that he necessarily embraces that view, but that's, he's sort of explaining it. Yes. Um, and, uh, and obviously this was, uh, a view that was followed up in uh, most significantly in uh, United States versus uh, Krushank, Krukshank, sorry, Krukshank, which, which was a case that found um, the, the Supreme Court overturned federal convictions for uh, white men who were involved in the murder of dozens of black men during the 1873 Colfax uh, massacre, which, which was happening in Louisiana over the gubernatorial election there uh, at the time. And it held that first and second amendment protections didn't apply to the states uh, or to the actions of individuals. So the federal government couldn't, uh, the, the, the second amendment couldn't be used to strike down state laws or, and the federal government couldn't use it as justification, justification for uh, going after um, people who, you know, tried to disarm uh, individuals. Now this was clearly, in the context of 
uh, white former Confederates trying to murder black, you know, black former slaves. But uh, Krugshank uh, is a horrific decision. I mean, there's no, yeah. yeah, we can't, you can't really beat around the bush on that but one. The, this concept, yeah, came uh, became more prominent. It seems after Krugshank, uh, yeah. which That's was correct. in 1876. Before that, you had a lot of abolitionists talking uh, about the opposite idea that the second amendment does protect, um, against state infringement. against state. Yeah. 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 I, and I mean, it wasn't just them. We don't need to go through the whole article. Of course, people can read it for themselves, but you had, you know, right as, as early as, uh, William Rawl back at the turn of the century and he, mm-hmm. uh, saying the same thing. They, they felt, uh, although he couched it in terms that were interesting, but he seemed to, uh, think that the second amendment restrained both the state and the federal governments.